Hey everybody, my name is Sam Effa and I'm really excited to be welcoming you to Take Our Kids to Work Day. As a 100 meter sprinter, I've represented Canada at three world championships and two Commonwealth Games as an RBC Olympian. Fun fact, I was also on The Amazing Race Canada season seven and I'm a University of Queen's master's student. So I got a lot going on here, but I gotta say, I am a huge fan of this day. I have good memories of it. My dad was an auto mechanic working at Calgary Transit, so around our neighborhood, we were this one-stop shop when it came to getting your vehicle looked at. It was cool. I remember my dad taking me to his work on Take Our Kids to Work Day. His garage was in the north side of Calgary and he showed me everywhere. His transit crew were an integral part of making sure people could get around the city. I got to see the offices and the behind the scenes of how his crew got our transit system running. It was super inspiring. I'm really excited about this year's theme, Take Our Kids to Work Day. You belong here. As a black athlete, I've had to believe I belong wherever I set my sights. You know, the thing I love about running is that when I step into my lane, it's just me. It's a quantitative sport where you see the work you've put forward on the track, in the weight room, and it translates directly into performance. I've been lucky to be at the start line with athletes I could identify with, but I wanna be real with you. This isn't always the case. In academic and professional pursuits, I've often been the only one that looks like me in the room. But I find this a, a unique inspiration because I've made it a goal to be that leader that I wish I had in some spaces. Maybe you feel the same way. Whether you're a female considering a career in welding or a student of color looking to become an engineer, know that you belong in whatever profession that sparks your interest. And today, you can adopt this mentality. You're at the exciting point where you get to choose your lane. And guess what? They're all open for you. I can promise you that. You'll have the chance to hear from inspiring professionals across a range of fields. You can participate in five live breakout sessions and meet diverse people working in science, technology, skilled trades, and of course, entrepreneurship. And you'll also learn from some of my RBC colleagues about the coming creativity boom in the workplace. If you can't make it to all of today's live session, no worries. You can check them out later on the Learning Partnerships YouTube. As we start things off today, joining in from across Canada, let's take a moment for land acknowledgement. I would like to begin by acknowledging the Indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. While we meet today on a virtual platform, I would like to take a moment to honour the land, waters, plants, animals, and all the ancestors that walked before us in this place we each call home in Kanata. The Learning Partnerships head office is in Toronto, a name taken from the Haudenosaunee language, on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron-Wendat peoples. It is now also home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. The territories on which we live, learn, work, and play are both unceded and subject to treaties, including the Dish with One Spoon, Wampum Belt Covenant, the Toronto Purchase, and the Williams Treaties. The violation of these treaties by the Government of Canada and the impacts of colonialism, including the legacy of the residential schools and the 60s scoop, have resulted in lasting harms, intergenerational trauma, and ongoing injustices to Indigenous peoples. As we reflect on the historical and current relationship between Canada's education system and Indigenous peoples, we are highly aware of how much work there is to do to repair the relationship with Indigenous students, parents, families, and communities. We acknowledge our responsibility as settlers on these traditional territories and as a learning organization to improve our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures, and to take concrete action as identified in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada's 2015 report. We are grateful for the opportunity to gather today and thank Indigenous peoples for sharing this land with us. My name is Deborah Kirby, and I'm the President and CEO of the Learning Partnership. You may know some of our programs, such as Welcome to Kindergarten, Coding Quest, or Investigate, Invent, and Innovate. But today, we're all about take our kids to work. And our focus today is you and the fact that you belong here. Off the top, I want to hit you with two stats. The first is, did you know by the year 2030 that 65% of the roles you will be stepping into don't even exist yet? Technology is transforming at such a rapid pace that the future of work 
is unfolding in all sorts of unexpected new directions. The second stat is that diversity and inclusivity really do drive innovation. Research shows that diverse teams outperform non-diverse teams by more than 50% in terms of the results they produce and in terms of the job satisfaction that employees have. This is an example of how lived experience is so important, how different voices, different skills and competencies are all needed at the table to drive innovation in terms of how we communicate, how we collaborate, how we solve problems together, and how we empathize with the different communities and clients that we work with. I'd like to close by saying a big thank you to RBC Future Launch for their incredible support making this day happen. As well, a big thank you to all of our panelists, our presenters, and our volunteers for bringing this day to you. And of course, a very special thank you to the one and only Sam Ifa. So once again, many thanks for being here. Remember, you belong here. Have a great Take Our Kids to Work Day 2021. All right, let's get started meeting some diverse professionals in some interesting fields. First, a question for you. What do a paramedic, a software designer, and clinical researcher have in common? They're all careers based in science. In fact, science offers a whole world of opportunities for work. We're now going to hear a little bit more about what a career in science can look like from Manny Ewara. Manny is a strategy team lead with Johnson & Johnson Canada. He's here to share with us what led him to his current role and what the different paths are and what he considered along the way, all rooted in science. Hi everyone, my name is Manny Awara and I work at Janssen Inc., the pharmaceutical company of Johnson & Johnson, where every day I get to work with teams of diverse people with backgrounds in things such as medicine, bench science, finance, law, and marketing, and get to work together to bring new medicines to Canadian patients and their healthcare providers. Ever since I was in high school, I've always been interested in science and healthcare and business, and today I'm fortunate enough to bring these interests together in the work that me and my team does at Janssen, where really it's our aim to create a future where disease is a thing of the past. Roles in science and healthcare come in many different forms. I know when I was first thinking about a future career in healthcare, my mind first went to working on the front lines, to the doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals that work face to face with patients every day. As we've learned over the course of the pandemic, these jobs play such an important role in keeping us all safe and healthy. However, over time, I was also able to learn that there are many different roles in the healthcare industry that are outside of hospitals and clinics, and that these roles also play a really important role in keeping and improving the healthcare of Canadians. After high school, I went on to pursue post-secondary education, first in biochemistry and then in epidemiology. This opened up opportunities for me to work in the public health care system, then in consulting, and today in the pharmaceutical industry. If I could offer one piece of advice to you at this stage as you're thinking about future careers and education, firstly, I'd say that really anything is possible with your passion and commitment. I encourage you to keep exploring and learning about all these many different possibilities, and today is really a great first step in doing that. I hope you all enjoy the day today and learning more about the workplace and the potential careers and, in, and opportunities available to you, both in industries like healthcare as well as many others. I hope you have a great day. And now we'll hear from a change maker who brings life to the importance of mentorship and community building. Up next is Angela Uma, a law student and the co-founder of Hey Black Girl. Angela will be sharing her story with you how she channeled the challenges she experienced as a university student new to Canada into co-founding a nonprofit that's focused on encouraging and empowering black women as they enter the workforce. Her story is really inspiring and hopefully can spark some ideas for how you can make a difference. Hello, my name is Angela Oma. I am a third year law student and the co-founder of Hey Black Girl, a community organization that seeks to empower black women through hosting culturally relevant workshops. I am so excited to be a part of Take Our Kids to Work. I think this initiative is important in nurturing our youth and providing resources for them to grow. So a bit about myself, in 2014, I migrated to Canada to pursue my undergraduate degree. 
And I'm not gonna lie, the first few years did present some challenges, especially because I didn't have the safety blankets of my family who did not move with me. And the same supports as many of my classmates in having well-established networks and being part of broader communities here in Canada. So Tanaka Martina, my fellow co-founders and I, decided to create a platform that would aid black women navigating through school life and into the workplace. So far, we have hosted professional development, mental health, sex education, and financial planning workshops, as well as launching various community initiatives. I want to encourage you all to pay for the lessons that you have learned or you will learn in your journeys by giving back to your communities through volunteering and even founding your own organizations. I know at first it might be daunting to create an entire organization, but I would say don't be afraid to lead, embrace your role as a leader and pour your talents into your organization. Lastly, ask for help. Email, connect with people who inspire you, seek mentorship, and surround yourself with like-minded individuals. Sometimes it's great to go straight to the source, and that's what students have been able to do with career mentors on Take Our Kids to Work Day. They've had the chance to send questions to dozens of professionals from across Canada. Check out their answers anytime at thelearningpartnership.ca slash career mentors. The range of questions submitted by students has been awesome, and the professionals who have answered them really enjoyed sharing about the work that they do. They provide some solid words of wisdom and helpful lessons learned along the way. Up next, you'll hear from a student who had the chance to ask some really great questions. Hello, I am Courtney Kirschman. I am from Fort Nelson, BC, Canada, and I am interested in going into acting in the future. What high school courses did you take that are helpful in your current job? English and writing, you need that no matter what. Graphic design, that's helpful to me because I make a lot of uh, Photoshop assets. Drama teaches you how to work with a team to make a project with a lot of moving parts. I think it teaches you more than people give it credit for. I work a lot with numbers in my role, analyzing data, and so I find the knowledge in mathematics comes in handy. What jobs do you think will be popular or in high demand by the time of 2030? Me being in the energy sector and you know a lot of people out there in the world wanting to help our planet, Renewable energy sources over the next 10 or 20 years are going to be a great uh, career and a great resource to help our planet. And that includes solar, wind, water, and so many other possibilities. Uh, personally, with the continuous demand for privacy and information security, I believe a career in the information technology would be in demand years to come. Um, however, certain jobs in engineering, medical, and financial sectors may also be in demand. Hence. I encourage you to keep looking for your area of passion and interest. What three words of advice would you give your grade nine self? Believe in yourself. Uh, I think a lot of us have that little birdie on our shoulder that chirps at us all the time and tries to tell us we can't do something or we're not good enough. I'd say put it aside and just go for it. Be passionate in your life and do more of what you want to do and persist and never give up no matter what life throws at you and be grateful for all of your life's experiences and realize that life is happening for you and not to you. Get started now. It doesn't matter what industry you want to be in, just start making those connections, start building those skills. It's okay if you change your mind later, but you'll have that experience and you'll start your resume earlier and get farther sooner. Okay, let's talk about a sector that I'm really excited about, skilled trades. Fast fact, over 700,000 skilled tradespeople are expected to retire by 2028. That means that there's going to be a lot of job openings soon in the skilled trades. Hilary Nowak exemplifies all of this. She's the owner and operator of Ink and Iron Automotive, an all-female auto body shop. And up next, she shares with you some of the things she loves best about owning a business in the skilled trades. Hey guys, my name is Hillary and I am the owner of Ink and Iron Automotive and I am an auto body repair technician. So a little bit about what I do as an auto body tech is 
I can take a car that has been crashed and I can repair it back to its pre-accident condition. What I currently do in my shop is we focus on classic cars and custom. So we'll take an old car and we'll take it all through the stages of removing the rust, replacing panels, um, sanding filler, painting it and putting it back together. So kind of like, I guess what you would see on car shows on TV where the car comes in looking like a complete wreck and it rolls out of the shop looking like a piece of art. I made the move about seven years ago to open my own shop. So it was always something that I had wanted to do. And I was kind of just looking for that idea that would make it stand out from all the other shops out there. Throughout my career, I was also meeting more women who either had a hard time finding a job or had to leave their workplace due to you know, harassment or not really feeling comfortable. Um, so hearing kind of their stories is what inspired me to open a shop that was completely women owned and operated. And we've been in business about seven years and I really want my shop to serve as an example for young women out there that you can do this job. Um, don't be intimidated. Trades are amazing. I think they, you know, when I first started, there was a lot of stigma around it. Like, oh, you're not smart enough to go to university. So just go learn a trade where that has changed so much. Your pay scale now, it, it's crazy. Like people are appreciating trades more. They're in demand. Um, I think they're more respected now. So don't don't come at it with that like nose up kind of way. Like you can have an extremely respectable career. Just give it a try, it's, it's fantastic. You've been waiting for it. Careers in tech. Technology is awesome. There are so many facets and it can be used to problem solve in just about any sector. Our next presenter knows what this can look like. Partik Dulat is here to share her passion for tech and her unexpected path to a career she's really excited about as STEM for Girls leader for IBM Canada. Hi everyone, I am so excited to be here with you all today. My name is Pratik Dolet and I am the STEM for Girls leader at IBM Canada. Within this role, I get the exciting opportunity to build a more diverse and inclusive workforce by breaking those stereotypes and really supporting those underserved and underrepresented populations. Before this role, I was hired as a software developer for IBM Consulting, where I got to work directly with clients and solve a variety of really cool problems. Technology can solve problems in absolutely every industry, giving us the unique opportunity to consult in any field that we'd like, whether it was fitness, retail, finance, education, you name it, you're never really stuck. I absolutely never considered tech in high school. In fact, I went to university to study biology and I had no understanding of what computer science was. It wasn't until my second year of university where I learned of the endless possibilities in tech and I kind of thought it was a lot of fun. I learned that surprisingly technology isn't black and white, right or wrong. It allowed me to foster my creativity and spark my curiosity in ways that I could not have imagined. I was so fortunate that I took a chance with that single computer science course, because without it, I would not be here with you all today. IBM has made it a goal to ensure that students have exposure to STEM at a much, much earlier age than I did by providing support to you, your parents, your teachers through IBM Skills Build and events such as today's Take Our Kids to Work Day. This day is so important in allowing you to preview the many interesting and rewarding career paths available today. Take the time to learn what's out there. Be curious, ask questions, and seek out mentors who inspire you. Remember that we want to share our experience with you. And it's okay to take risks and learn about areas that you may not be interested in. I walked into my first computer science course with a lot of negative assumptions but walked out with a whole new perspective and now a career that I'm really excited about. Take Our Kids to Work Day is presented by RBC Future Launch, which is all about bringing people together to co-create solutions so they're better prepared for the future of work. As a member of the RBC Future Launch team, I'm proud to support the work that we do to help you be the best you can be. RBC Future Launch can help you build new skills, grow your network, gain experience, and tap into programs that enhance mental well-being because these areas are so important. And we're proud to partner with the Learning Partnership on Take Our Kids to Work Day. It's exciting to be a part of this day of career exploration for Canadian youth. 
Whether you're participating with your class today, with a parent, or with a mentor, we are so glad you're here, and we're proud you made it. It takes effort to show up. It takes time to learn. It takes courage to try new things. And by participating in this day, you're doing all of that because you are the future of work and you belong here. Well, that wraps up our kickoff event for Take Our Kids to Work Day 2021. It's been a huge pleasure to welcome you to this day of learning and exploration. Join the conversation online using the hashtag kids to work and share your feedback by completing the Take Our Kids to Work Day survey at thelearningpartnership.ca slash survey. Big thanks to presenting sponsor RBC Future Launch and to the many sponsors who made today possible, including lead sponsors, Johnson & Johnson, IBM, and Toronto Hydro. And thanks especially to all of you participating students, parents, and workplaces across Canada. I hope you dive into the sessions today. Check out as many as you can and be sure to ask questions because you truly do belong here on Take Our Kids to Work Day. Have a great day, everyone.